knows the worst end. If he isn't already dead, the inhabitants of the sacred moat. Down there. We'll take care of him. Those women just couldn't be any safer. Look at it. Their temple's completely surrounded by the moat and the sea. An island inside the island of Lesbos. Daughter of Zeus, I pray thee, come now, O oh 
queen on thy wing chariot and all that my heart desires to accomplish accomplish thou and be thyself my ally Hyperbius, and I command the guards of Melancris, our lord. I have been ordered to hunt an enemy. I believe he's hiding here. This enclosure is sacred. No man from Mytilene, no man from Lesbos can violate it without committing a sacrifice. Melancris is your lord too. In Mytilene, some men of the common people are plotting against him. Their leader managed to escape from the moat where he had fallen. He can only be here. There is no one here, Hyperbius. Laricus. My dear sister. I didn't expect to see you in the uniform of an officer. I finished my instruction at the military school. Hyperbius simply hastened my appointment. Hyperbius never forgets that we're the niece and nephew of Melancris. I am sure this doesn't diminish your valor in any way. Suffolk, explain to your brother and to Hyperbius that there's no longer any reason why they should offend us with their presence. Send everyone outside. And continue the search there. He can't be far away. You may say goodbye to your sister. I hope to see you again soon, Sappho. Goodbye, Larkas. You despise me a little, don't you? You don't like what I'm doing. You're right. But not all the duties of a soldier are pleasant. And it's a little your fault if I continue to live by my sword. Marry me, and I swear I will change. But I've told you that I must remain here. How can Aphrodite allow such a sacrilege? You know, and everyone knows in Mytilene that that I love you. But if I felt that, that your love was strong enough, perhaps, perhaps I could be happy with your Pervious. But I can't. I will put my trust in time and your poem, Sappho. One day, you will decide to come out. And I will be there, waiting for you. Goodbye. You seem dazed by his words. What are you saying, Actus? I'm ashamed of you. Don't you understand? You must never trust them, never. Men bring only deceit, hatred, and lies. They must have made you suffer very much. I hate them. They dazzle you with their insolent glances. You don't know them. But as long as I'm alive, they'll never harm you. You're the only dear friend I'll ever have, Sappho. Let's go back. There's no use going on with the search. We'll get the prisoners to talk. Maybe they'll reveal his hideout. Now, why in heaven's name should the people want to rebel? Because they are hungry. Well, then, why don't they eat? Because excessive taxes have reduced them to poverty. That's not true. Why don't you admit the people are just a lazy mass with no will to work? You are all as greedy as animals. Melanchus. Ah, there you are, Hyperbius. Well, did you catch him? Not yet, my lord. I even looked for him in the sacred moat. Oh. So now we find him. Two of his followers fell into our hands. They'll tell us where to find him.
what Hyperbia said to you, Sappho. I've never <laughs> seen such a handsome man. He looks just like the statue of Hercules. And you were alone with him. They say he wants to marry you. Is it true? Did he take you in his arms? <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> Sappho would never do such a thing if she didn't want to. How can you be so sure? I would never be able to resist if a soldier wanted to take me in his arms. I can believe that. You thought of nothing else all day. <laughs> I don't like that Perbius at all. I think your brother is much nicer. What do you know about men? <gasps> were hunting a man, a man who was trying to incite the people against Melancris, our ruler. We must tell the priestess at once. <gasps> Not now. This man needs help. Help me quickly. Take the basin. Bring me that box. <gasps> hey, where should I Go into the hall and take a lamp. Go outside and see if anyone's coming. Lower, lower. They'll kill him. But he can't stay here. The priestess or the slave girls will see him. There is a place where no one would think of looking. The inner cell of the temple. <coughs> Sappho, I've obeyed you till now. But a man in the sanctum, this is the worst of all sacrileges. That's not true. It can't be a sacrilege if Aphrodite protects him. Be careful, Sappho. We've no time to lose. Clyde, go on ahead and put the torch back in its place. to follow the example of those who sacrificed their lives. 
The day of the end of this tyranny is approaching. In the ambush the other night, some of our best men lost their lives. And now, more than ever, we need a leader. Where is our leader? We know that he wasn't captured by the tyrant's guards, and they still don't know his name. But what hope can we have that he came out of the sacred moat alive? I can't answer you. But something tells me that he is alive, that he will soon come back to us. Empty words! I still say that we can't remain in this uncertainty at such a critical time. We should choose a new leader. Ilium wasn't taken in a day. And we ourselves have borne the tyranny of Melancros for many years. Too many years! Let's wait three more days. And then if we have no news of our leader, you can appoint a new... I'll be punished if I'm caught helping a guilty man. My guilt is that I love liberty. Does liberty really mean so much to you? It's what I live for. But even if you're, even if you're shut up in a cell, even if you're persecuted, you can continue to dream, to, to create images, to, to love. Yes, but if you've been born as I was, among those who've always suffered, among the poor... What do you know about me? Well, your words tell me everything. You speak like someone who's always enjoyed liberty. I'm sorry if I say things that are hurtful. No, no. Only things that I don't understand. For me, liberty is a choice. If I wanted to, I could go out of here and live like other women. Yes, but you prefer to remain here because here you feel more free. In Mitalini, there is no freedom. Power has led to, has led to oppression. Think of Melanchus as he goes through the streets with his insulting wealth, protected by his guards. I'm sorry. I must go now. Oh, I've offended you again. I don't know yet. But I must go now, otherwise they'll be looking for me. You have food and, and water. Perhaps I'll come back later. He's handsome, isn't he? You like him. I don't know what you're talking about. I saw you. How you talked to him and how you squeezed his hand. You're mad. You're falling in love with him. That's not true. What do you know about love? You mustn't torment me like this anymore, understand? You see? It's true. You let him hold your hand. He even caressed you. And now you hate me. Leave me alone. <laughs> dear to you. Who are you? What do you want? 
I'm interested in your happiness. Don't be as stupid as other men. Do you know who the girl who promised to help you is? Sappho, the niece of Melancris. And do you know the name of the man who is going to marry her? Hyperbius, the captain of the guards. Perhaps the very one who wounded you. Then why did she take care of me? Why did she try to save me? Because the dead can't talk. You'll see. Out of a sense of gratitude, she'll make you tell the names of all your companions. Then after that, her intention is to hand you over to Hyperbius as a wedding gift. Of course. If you prefer Sappho's kisses, you can stay. You'll have enough to eat and drink for a few days.
managed to take him some food again this morning. But he would only talk about you. That's our fate. How can we hope for a man to be interested in one of us? After he's seen and talked with Sappho. Sappho? At least you're happy now that he's better. He's much better now. He'll go away soon and we may never see him again. That'll be enough for today, girls. Go to him. If the priestess looks for you, we'll make some excuse. Thank you. Goddess, perhaps. The pleasure of seeing you makes it worth the risk. Are you so anxious to see me? Of course. I have given you the proof of that, I believe. And I will prove it again. Today, you're even more beautiful. If the great dawn goddess saw you, she wouldn't dare rise up out of the sea. She would be afraid of the comparison. Please, let's go outside. No one can see us here. It's the wind coming from the sea. Perhaps. But I would like to have a look. No, Hyperbius. It's a sacrilege to cross the threshold of the sanctum. Please.
trail served no purpose. The wounded man escaped. And they'll never find him. Never. And Sapo will leave here forever to marry Hyperbia. You cannot tell whether the man loves the bird more or the bird the man. Uh, the less one knows, the better, Maestro, believe me. But don't get distracted. This bird weighs more stuff than it is alive. If you don't hurry, I'll be stiff like him. You may continue, you. As you see, I can listen without moving. In every village of your domain, I spent many hours, disguised, among the crowd, listening to what the common people were saying. I must tell the truth, great Melancris. The opposition to your reign is increasing. The names. You know the names of the troublemakers. There are too many. It'd be easier to name those who have good to say of the government. There are some left. Oh, excuse me, Maestro, please. I thought that the policy followed by my incomparable ministers had met with a uh, unanimous disagreement by now. Oh, and is this all? Or have you... Any other surprising news? Yes, there is something else I'd like to tell you. I'm listening. But it's no surprise. I said I'm listening. The people of Mytilene have enriched your city, my lord, with their labors and their craftsmanship. But now their conditions have grown worse. The people say this is because of the greed of a few speculators, protected by the throne. You're going too far. We must have precise accusations and witnesses to back them up. Our divine Melancris cannot be made to bear the vicious slander of a mob of ruffians. Your divine Melancris, may the gods preserve him, has borne much worse. So this is what they are saying, the people. Yes. And they also say that if you will give them greater freedom, if you will allow them a share in your government, your wealth and the power of Middle Enough. will become so much greater. Have you got that, you and the people? But you dare to threaten your king? Why didn't you come with a group of the rebels? You could have started the revolt 
right here. What's missing? I am here. The representatives of my government are all here. They stand rooted to the ground with fear, these brave men. <laughs> Maestro, you'll never get a better chance of seeing expressions of terror as there are on these faces standing before you. Oh. <laughs> but, sire, what about the statue? Continue. What do you think these are? Oh, we have enough statues. Let's go. I'm late for my bath. The coward, they hear the word to and they're scared out of their wits. Ha! The coward, they need a king like me. Go along. My dear Alto, time and experience have taught you nothing. You're still the same. Ready to raise your sword in defense of the weak and the oppressed. Well, what I said was true. I was speaking in defense of the people, but also for the good of Melanchrist. It's too late. Things have gone much too far. How can you believe that a peaceful solution is still possible? It is against the interest of everyone. I don't think so. Perhaps even you don't think so. You're mistaken, Alta. Ione, Demetrius, and the others are too powerful. They won't allow themselves to be defeated. Now they're even fighting among themselves. Perhaps we need a tyrant with a hand stronger than that of Melanchrist. You saw the lesson I taught the traitors a few days ago. Yes, I heard about it. But you didn't catch their leader. Not yet. I wish you could have been there with us, like the old times. It was the day after you left. He seemed mortally wounded. But then, instead of his corpse, we found the corpse of a lion. But the day will come when I'll see him face to face. Look. They were already dead when the guards had them hanged. Gods have never permitted offending the dead. An example was necessary. Now, now I have some more good news to give you. Tomorrow, the date of my wedding will be set with the most beautiful girl in all Mytilene. Come along, we found her. She's down in the moat where the lions are. Come on, she'll be killed. Brother Laricus and an officer have asked to see you. You can't refuse, you know. Well, well, well. My future bride keeps me waiting, does she? Go away. Go away, all of you. I don't want to see anyone. <laughs> she is upset by the tragic death of Actus. She was one of her best friends. I am sorry, Sappho. Your grief is mine, but you must also think of, of yourself, of us. You know the reason that I'm here is to set the day for our wedding. What rights do you have over me? We've only met twice. But Sappho, I... Even if I did kiss you, what does it mean? It doesn't mean I'm going to marry you. Sappho, what are you saying? Wait a Perbius. Forgive me. I didn't mean to offend you. What Larica said is true. I'm upset over the death of Actus.
This is not a time of joy for me. Let these unhappy days go by. As you wish, Seto. Only you could have got out of that sacred motor. Oh, the gods helped me. And not only the gods. Your joy is mine. We must not allow ourselves to be optimistic too soon. Again today, the mercenaries of Melancris raided the people of our farmlands to collect new taxes. Listen to this woman's account of how they extorted the taxes of Trajani. My daughter was coming home with her sister when, as they approached the house of her mayor's... <gasps> Look! It's that mayor's house! Because of the drought. Hush, listen. They're coming here. Hurry, hide. No, no, not there. Come, come with me quickly. Here. Behind this wood. Quickly, in the name of the gods. Open in the name of the king. You want to go away? In there. About time. We haven't got all day to waste. But we don't usually take long with people who've paid their taxes. Have you paid yours? Many months ago. Oh, so you're the master. What's your name? Amphiraeus of Trigeni. Amphiraeus of Trigeni. Hmm. Ah, Amphiraeus of Trigeni. A wife. Hmm. Two daughters. Oh, with some acres of land. Our tax collectors have no record of you having paid. We already paid, I swear. Oaths don't count for much, I promise you. Less than taxes, in fact. I mean the new taxes, of course. Besides, who'll swear you're not in league with the rebels? And where are your daughters? They're working. In the fields. At this hour, that is clear you're nothing but a liar. Where have you hidden your money? Speak up. We haven't any more. The others, they took it all. You're being obstinate, eh? Well, don't worry, we'll find your gold. Search the house. will remain forever with us. They burnt our house. My friends, 
I made another attempt to persuade Melanchris to come to a peaceful settlement. It was useless. And I tell you now, it was my last. So, we must prepare to act. To act soon, very soon, before Melanchris can engage new mercenaries. But for this, we need arms. And horses. And army. We've carried out your orders. The blacksmiths have been working in secret day and night. In four days, we will have arms for all. 2,000 loyal men, and then the whole populace. You've done more than I'd even hoped. When the arms are delivered, be ready to move. I'll be in touch with you, Dupidicus. We'll be ready. <laughs> would find the courage to revolt. They are nothing more than a flock of sheep. Have you ever seen Sappho, the lovely niece of our king? Everyone knows her poems. After Homer and Hesiod, our people lost the gift for poetry until she came. Everyone says she's very beautiful. Rejoice with me, Alto, my friend. There is Sappho, my future bride. This is my friend, Alta, a faithful servant of Melanchris. He is a great admirer of your poetry. He compares your verses to those of Homer. Oh, really? I thought it was the duty of the gods to restrain the people and to arrest traitors. Perhaps Melanchris wouldn't be so happy if he knew you spent your time discussing poetry. But then, men often say what they don't mean. They smile when it's convenient and they're ready to change their tastes and their ideas when they no longer suit them. Forgive me. The art of deceit doesn't belong exclusively to men. It's also the privilege of women. You must know that. Women swear today that they love you. Tomorrow they kiss another. They're like leaves in the wind or dust in the Sirocco. Perhaps it'd be better if you judged yourself before judging others. When a woman is angry, she's even more beautiful. I know where she's going. She's painting frescoes in the new temple of Amphitrite. Let's follow her. was mortified at your sudden flight. He wanted to ask you if he had offended you in, in any way. But I assure you that if he did, it was entirely unintentional. Alta has a tender heart. He protects women, and the weak, and even the people. But Alta, let this be clear. I will protect Sappho myself. Nevertheless, if you have really offended her, then you'll have to answer for it to me. I can protect myself. And I'm not obliged to receive your friends as yet. If this altar sets himself up to be defender of the weak, he certainly hasn't chosen the right way. Gentle Sappho, no price would be high enough to persuade a man to offend you. What's that? It's one of the Arab horses has broken loose. No way. I'll take care of it. I see that you have started an argument. Go on with it. Why don't you denounce me now? You're waiting for Hyperbeast to call for reinforcements. So, you're the poor boatman. And this is the faith in me that was to be my reward. Should I have had faith in you? 
Go ahead. Why don't you shout? Are you afraid I'll kill him? Have you already told him and now you're playing a farce to trap me to find out who we are, how many we are, and where we meet? You don't deserve an answer. Of course, silence is much better than to recall your promises. I'll leave this place only with you. It should have been with you or anyone else. Listen to me. It's your pride that makes me speak. Your absurd pride. Do you really think I would marry Hyperbius? What are you trying to make me believe now? He told me all I wanted to know. Hyperbius knows nothing about your being in the temple. He was about to discover you. I had no way of stopping him. He wanted to marry me long ago. You know that. It's part of his plan to marry the niece of Melancris. You did it for me. What else could I do? It's easy for a woman to deceive a man who desires her. A glance is enough. A smile. And I wanted you to be safe. And now you are. Suffer, my love. <laughs> seen us or he wouldn't go away like that? It's our destiny. It'll be even more terrible if he finds us. But it doesn't make any difference. I'm not afraid. It isn't right for you to share your life with a man who risks his day after day. I have no right to make you suffer. Like... It's hopeless. We must suffer and go on loving each other. Don't you remember what the Sibyl said? Fate has joined us under the sign of Amphitrite. is not in. But what can I do for you? You can step aside. All of you. Carry on. My master will not receive this offense lightly. Don't worry. We are here by orders of Malacris. is a devoted follower of Melancris. Make my apologies to your master. He will understand. They told us a traitor had taken refuge in this house. And we had to uh, search it. But we were mistaken. Come, we're leaving. Etra, look at my new dress. Isn't it beautiful and perfect for a day like today? Your moods are changeable, Sappho. You weren't so gay at the Temple of Amphitrite. At least not while I was there. How dare you enter my room without my permission? Why do you look at me like that? If you don't want to see me, order me to leave. But then, I'll have to act without consulting you. And I didn't ever want to have any secrets from my future wife. I... I... I didn't expect to see you here. I know. My presence doesn't please you. It seems this privilege is reserved for another man. Have you seen Alto? No. Why should I see him again? 
What I saw in the Temple of Amphitrite was enough. You're a generous man, Hypervius. Try to understand. Alter and I... You knew each other before, didn't you? No. Yet it took only a few moments to make you fall into his arms. Listen, Sappho. You know how great and sincere my love for you is. Yet I would willingly give you up to a more fortunate rival if I was sure it was for your good. But Altar, he isn't worthy of you. He lied to you. That's not true. I can't believe you. Do you know who Altor is? A traitor. He wears the uniform of the guards, at the same time plots against his lord. That's a lie. You know it's true. You kept him hidden in the temple when he was wounded, and you helped him to escape a just punishment. You too have set yourself against the state and against our lord Malankus. That's not true. What do you think I am, a fool? Do you think I can't see your fear of the truth? But I don't know anything that you're speaking about. And I believe Alfred to be innocent. Ask him to come here, then. I can show him something. We'll see what his explanation will be. What is it? Don't be afraid. Because nobody will know that you helped him. And as for him, I can still save him. Well, then? They searched everywhere. Hyperbius told me to be sure to make his apologies to you. He will explain it to you personally. I tried to stop... Don't worry, it's not your fault. Just put everything back in its place. I'm looking for Sappho. She left. She'll be at home. of your lies. Please. No. I want to hear you say that you love him. That you deceived me. I want to hear it from you, from your own lips. Go away, please. Haven't you thought of the right lie yet? Go away, Phaon. Phaon. Then it's all clear. You have denounced me. Don't worry. Sappho has nothing to do with it. You yourself gave me the evidence. Do you recognize... these? One I found in your house. And the other is the one you left in the temple of Aphrodite. We'll keep them as a little souvenir of you. And Hector sworn me. But madman that I was, I let myself be led back to the temple. And you'd already agreed. You sent for him to arrest me. That's enough. I won't listen to you anymore. Let him speak. It's interesting. But tell me, why didn't you turn me in then at once when you saw me in my guard's uniform? You wanted to know more, didn't you? Oh, a kiss can make a man tell secrets. Stop him. I won't listen to him. Why? It helps us to know him better. Go on. We kissed for a long time. You know that? Her mouth was soft and fresh. Yes, and her hands were trembling, oh, really trembling when she pressed against me. Now you're going too far. Don't want to hear any more. Be careful, Hyperbius. Sapo is too clever for you. Her acting is superb with her trembling and languor and abandon. Now I declare you under arrest for treason. Oh, yes? Well, take me then. You must, you promised. They'll kill him. They'll torture him to make him talk. I'll kill myself here before your eyes if you don't. Will you be my wife? Yes. Why 
should I deny it? I've always been very fond of you, Altor. But in spite of that, my esteemed and illustrious ministers, in spite of that, uh, well, I've never really liked you ever. There is nothing more to say, my noble king. No, excuse me. Dirty. I haven't finished yet. Oh, I think uh, that's all right. <laughs> you forced your way into the house of my niece, Sappho. You struck an officer. I am angry with you, Altor, because you're one of the few brave men in this entire kingdom where they're all idiots and cowards. He deserves to die. By all the gods. I only, when I'm finished, I'll tell you. <sighs> now, I forgot what I was saying. That cowards and idiots abound in this country. That's it. Huh. And if there is one thing I have not understood in all my 20 years as king, it is why you weren't the first man I had beheaded, my only. Huh. May I be drowned in the river age, crown and all. If it's not the humiliations and the discomforts you've made me swallow all these years that have caused my indigestion. As for you, the death sentence will make you ponder the limits of your audacity. Divine Melancro, uh, Hyperbius doesn't want to oppose your death sentence, but I'm sure we can avoid an unnecessary execution if you let him speak. All right, what does he want? Hyperbius, for the sake of our friendship, speak up. Divine Melancros, I have been the chief victim of Altos insults. And for this reason, I am making a plea for mercy. I said he dies. Altor is loved, not only by the people, but also because of his courage by your guards. An act of clemency, my lord, would strengthen the affection that everybody feels for you. I said... Hmm. What does my beloved Sappho think about this? Divine Melanchrist, the will of my future husband is law for me. An act of clemency. Yeah. A feast to celebrate the marriage of my niece. Yes. Yes. The people will be happy. Yes. Hyperbius, yours is good advice. Hmm. Fairly well, I make you a present of your life. However, I hereby sentence you to exile. Ah! You offended the house of Laricus, eh? So you, Laricus, will be in command of a ship that will take him to Thrace, where I sincerely hope he dies as soon as possible. Is my bath ready? Huh? Well, come on, come on. Quickly, quickly. Thank you. 
was going to hold us responsible for the disappearance of Laricus's nephew. If we don't find him, to go back to Mitalini will mean death for us. Look! Maybe they found Laricus. Maybe. Why don't they answer? There's no one at the helm. There's no one on deck. They're going to rat us! Hey! Hey! Osman! Roll! Thank you, my friend. I thought I'd never see you again. We could never have taken arms against Palancras without you. Now we can fight Yes, together. yes, and that's Let enough me... talk. Let me do my work. <laughs> Here, take this. Surrender! It's not you we've come for. We want only to be our leader. If you don't resist, we'll spare your lives. Throw down your arms. Back to the ship. We'll meet again, Pam. Why not? We're not so far from Mitalini. Remember, Pam, you will see us again. Unfortunately, there is no hope. Laricus was killed, and his body disappeared in the sea. You wanted Alto's life spared, and he has killed your brother. Now he's free, and is preparing to fight against Melancris. You must avenge Laricus. Alto must die. I will marry you, Herperbius, as soon as possible. 
We will be united in our revenge. You know how much I desire it, but... But now Alto is marching on Mytilene at the head of an army. This is not the time for a wedding. We must fight. We'll wait until the traitors are defeated. Perhaps there will be fighting in the city. And your life is precious. It is better for you to leave Mytilene. All the families of the men who follow Malankras are doing so. It will only be for a short time. against the abuses of the tyrant. We demand a voice in the government. Surrender now and there'll be no bloodshed. You can't hold out long. What is your answer? Our answer is the answer of our divine Melanchrist. This is it! This will be on your heads.
Why, they're coming. Can't you hear them? Hit it. You. No, I am not a ghost. They didn't kill me in Epirus, as you ordered them to. You need not fear. We are not fighting for vengeance, only for justice and freedom for the people. You will live, Melancris, to remember your errors and your weaknesses. And your evil advisers will live too. But all of you will be banished far from Metellini. And you will never return. We want peace. to want to go back would be the people. It is true, Pitticus. Such things are understood only on the eve of exile or of death. tormenting you, Phaon, and I wish I could help you. Sappho has taken refuge in the temple of Aphrodite. The priestess is weary now, and has asked for Sappho to take her place. Sappho has accepted. She will dedicate her life to the temple's young maidens. Some great grief must have driven her to this decision. And Hyperbius? Hyperbius is resigned to his fate. He has released her from her pledge. He has many things to account for. I want to speak to you about this, too. I don't want to see Hyperbius. I doubt if I could control myself. You must show control for the good of the people. Our government lacks experience. Hyperbius penitent can help us in avoiding mistakes. He knows our enemies and the feelings of their followers. There's no limit to his ambition. I repeat. It would be a gesture of peace towards the nobles. A lasting peace. Besides, every state, whether a democracy or not, needs guards and a captain of the guards. No one would be better suited. He knows all the enemies. Old and new. Well, if that's your decision, I won't oppose it. Let's hope that we don't live to regret it. Be seated, please. We are here to discuss the formation of a new assembly. way you act in a democracy. I wanted to see you. I wanted to see you once more to remember your face with his falsehoods and deceit. Oh, Aphrodite has a worthy follower and you, no woman in the world could lie as well as... So it's you who committed this sacrilege. I should have guessed. It is not enough that you killed her brother. You know that I didn't kill him? I saved your life. And you permitted me to keep my rank. Now we are even. Today the people rule in Metellini, and I serve them faithfully. Phaon, I ask you to leave this sacred place and never to come back to it. I think that we'll meet again. Wait, Phaon. Maricus. Sappho was not untrue to you. She only agreed to marry Hyperbius to save your life. But that isn't all. Justice here is not yet done. The hand of your hired assassin was not steady enough. The night was in my favor, a Phoenician ship rescued me. It's quite clear. At my death, Sappho would become the sole heir of Melancris. By marrying her, 
Hyperbius would become his successor. It was an ambitious plan, and it seemed easy.